Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to my video. I am Josh with Impact and I'm excited to bring you this video. As an experienced investor, I get questions all the time from new investors asking what's the best software, what's the best list, what's the best type of lead that I should be going after. Well, this video will explain it right here. Finding gold inside of PropStream with my friend from Team PropStream, Paul DePozo. He goes really deep into some of the lists you should be pulling, how you stack them, how you call, what you say, everything that you need to know inside of PropStream. We've used PropStream ourselves with great success in the past two years, so I'm excited to bring you some of the details of this episode. So listen live as we go deep into finding gold inside of PropStream. Take care, drop some comments below about what you thought was best. Talk to you soon. Paul, thank you so much for being here. First, my man, welcome to the Lead Gen Underground. It is out of respect for any everyone's time. We go live for strictly 30 minutes every single week and we cut it off at 30 minutes. Why? Because it makes us pack in the gold nuggets. Um, guys, it is my mission with this group, not for anything personal for me, but it's for everyone else. I'm trying to build a community here, and it's my goal to give you guys free game, actionable steps that you can take and put into your business and make real money in your business every single week. That's always my goal, and that's why I do these lives. Um, today, I have on my friend, Paul, who I've never met in person. We've talked several times now. And this dude is just crushing it with PropStream. I don't know if you guys are all onto PropStream yet. If you're not, you're gonna be after today. And if you're not, you should be because PropStream is just an unbelievable value for what it is. I mean, you can go on there and just grab all kinds of information. I don't wanna take away from Paul and what he's about to talk about, but Paul, can you just give us a short intro and then kind of what PropStream, what your real sweet spot is? Cause you can do so much on there, man. All right, yeah, man, thanks for that intro. So, you know, other than, and then being an active investor, a virtual active investor, I am on, on team prop stream. Um, you know, I, I spearhead a lot of, a lot of, uh, what we do with, uh, affiliate partners and, and really like uh, higher end groups and, and communities like this. Um, you know, I, I'd love to show you guys what, what we do in here. There's a lot in the system. Uh, we're not going to have all that time. So I'm just going to really focus on some, some main functions. Um, you know, some of you might already be using this, so I'd love to see maybe, you know, you put out some questions maybe in the chat box or however you guys are communicating in here. Uh, if we don't get to it today, obviously we don't have that, you know, uh, that much time, um, you know, we'll, we'll fill back out or, you know, you can contact me directly. So um, let's, can we share a screen here somehow, man? Yeah, um, you should be able to, I yeah. think, read your co-host. Let's see, then I can kind of show some folks here. Um, are you able to do my, it? Uh, my mug. Yeah, here, I got it. I'm running okay, it cool. right now. I hope everybody can see. Can you see my screen now? Can. Right, awesome. So, you know, PropStream is a, a nationwide property uh, data tool. Uh, I like to call it the Swiss army knife of uh, real estate investing because it really gives you the ability to run, um, run information or run property addresses basically for anywhere in the country. Uh, and you can also pull data, property lists. Um, so let me kind of just pick a random property here. We'll do, uh, let's go to Florida. So I'm feeling kind of warm today. Um, so you can, you know, as you guys are marketing, right? Um, I'm kind of going a little backwards here, but as you guys are marketing, uh, you're getting leads that come into your system. Um, you know, they come into you, you, you drive by, maybe in the olden days, you're driving by some, some properties or however these properties are coming into your world. You know, you might want to throw them in here um, after they've come into your CRM or maybe after you set appointments, whatever, right? Um, you do the, the property search, you get the details window here on the right side. Uh, this opens up a whole, uh, a whole plethora of information for the individual property and everything around it, right? So anything that you might need to verify, confirm when you're talking to that person, or maybe even before you've even spoken to that seller, right? Your potential uh, seller. Uh, you get the name, property address, all the characteristics of the building, the location, where it's at, HOA information, whatever you might need uh, that might help you in the negotiation um, or just understanding of what you're going to buy, right? Um, as well as value, right? And we have our own estimated value. And what, what I tell folks is use this kind of like a, uh, like a starting point or, or maybe even how you used to use Zillow. I use Zillow in my business. I tell you why, because that's the retail number. That's, that's what people see out there. The general public, I was in my business. I like having an understanding of that number, but here with ours, like we have that value in my, my business. We use it to know for in the general ballpark, the beautiful thing of, of PropStream is we're able to actually go into the comp section and look at all the different activity that's occurred either in the public record or in the MLS uh, data. And now the cool thing in our last week's update is we've combined that data together on the front page to show you both. And that's really cool because 
you know, not every transaction happens in the MLS, right? And not every transaction, and, and, and it's important to see the stuff that, that happens that's not on there, and maybe something has happened on the MLS that hasn't posted to public record, right? So we make it really easy to see all the activity to help you determine your, your ARV, figure out your offer price, all that, all that stuff. So in this example, let's run through it, right? This is, uh, this is a property in, in Sarasota, Florida. I might come in here and start sh uh, shrinking down my filter range, right? Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have, have been using MLS or, you know, some sort of comping system. And this is all kind of familiar things to you, right? Hold on. Let me grab a sip of water here. While you're sipping that water, are you guys pulling this in from like IDXs from uh, other MLSs around the country? Is that all that functions? There's a lot of data coming from a bunch of sources. So we have first American title data in here. We have CoreLogic data. Uh, we do have IDX data. Um, and then a whole bunch of supplementary data that fills in a lot of gaps, right? Um, I wish I could say we have everything. I wish I could say we're perfect. We're not, but that's what we're always working towards. And really getting a lot of the feedback from our active user base has helped us mold this to what this is now, right? Um, so, you know, we, we heard the message. This was actually something I was uh, asking to, to tweak for, for a long while. It was really kind of combining all this data to allow you to look at everything that's happened so you guys can make your decision on your offer prices. So by using the filters, like, like I said, you guys are familiar with, you can really dial this down to the most like properties that make sense, right? And by looking at the different colors, you can determine what's public record, what's MLS. Um, you could determine maybe something recently just sold that's not in public record yet and vice versa. Um, once you do, uh, which is cool, we have a new comp report. That'll take a, a second here for, for it to load. But this is something that you can print out maybe to take to your appointments, you show the seller, hey, look, this is what's sold here. The report's nice and clean now. We've updated this. So anybody that's been using it, you'll, you'll notice that difference there in the update. I'll let that go in the background here. But uh, um, I, I want to also show that we show you a lot of information of all its neighbors, all the information you want to know about the subject property and everything around it. What I mean by that is sometimes we're looking uh, to get a hold of a, a neighbor. Maybe the neighbor is the key to find the seller, you know, the owner of that house, or maybe they can be a buyer, whatever it may be. This is a quick way to really, you know, identify your, your immediate neighbors, you know, click on it, hit details, boom, you're in the same kind of window, details window of that neighbor, right? You can save it, skip trace it, call them immediately right there. Everything down here from, from cash buyers down, again, it's showing you everything around there, right? So maybe you want to identify cash buyers right now, right? If you're locking something up, you might want to identify in a new neighborhood. Eh, I'm not sure if, if, there's a lot of, if there's a lot of action occurring here. What's going on here? Live on, uh, live on our stream, we're having some technical difficulties, but I'll, I'll keep going. So sometimes you're trying to um, understand. Did I freeze up on you guys over here? No, we're good. Can you, okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, my screen seems to have froze up. Hold on a second here, guys. Sorry about that. So sometimes you're trying to identify what's going on, um, you know, what's going on with, with the market. Was there a lot of activity there? Was there a lot of – load this up. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries, man. Let's go. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. So that's one thing that I'm always looking at, especially when I'm trying to review with my team and stuff, is that uh, if it's an area I'm not really familiar with, I'm looking at the velocity of transactions, right? You don't want to get exactly. stuck in the middle of nowhere where nobody's doing flips. You don't want to be the Taking first. Taking the thoughts right out of my head. Exactly. That's what I was trying to, trying to spit out. You know, if you can quickly identify there being a few transactions or a bunch of transactions, you know what you're about to buy or about to lock up. Um, should be relatively easy to dispose, right? So that, that's, that's my point of, let me open that back up. If you guys, can you uh, see what I'm seeing again now? Yep. Okay, perfect. Right, so here I can quickly go to cash buyers and then I can s sort this by sale date. And I can know from here, from 311 down to, uh, wow, wow. We get all the way down to here, 118. So that's quite a few properties that happen, cash transactions that happen in that area. I know that I'll be able to get this sold, right? Without a doubt. So a lot of transactions, like you said, a lot of velocity of transactions in there. So I feel comfortable. That's one way I use this, right? There's a lot of ways to use the data. I'm kind of going through quickly here. Some, some ways that we use it in our business and some ways that maybe can be helpful to identify whatever it may be, you know, opportunity or just ease of getting things sold, right? Uh, Pre-foreclosures, going to give you a snapshot around their subject property of that activity. 
Same thing with foreclosures with liens. This is interesting because this is going to identify properties that have some sort of lien attached, right? And when I hear a lien, I'm, that, to me, that sounds like uh, people owing money. And I, in, in my mind, I want to make contact with folks that owe money. Right, okay. something's going on. Um, I, I can show you in, in a little bit quick, I can show you how to create lien lists, which are really, really cool because you can set them by lien amount. Maybe $100 liens, motivation isn't so high, but 5,000 and above, maybe so, right? So here it's identifying all these properties that have liens around there. Uh, same thing with high equity, properties with vacant status, free and clear, all the way down to divorce, right? So again, this is all from the subject property window, um, in addition to mortgage and transaction history. And we actually even break it down to the different, um, you know, recording dates for different documents that might have happened during the ownership, right? Um, one last point on this window, we also include, let's see if we can find one. Uh, we don't, bad example, but we can show you, identify if we have the document image right from this view. We used to hide it before, now it's kind of visible. So you know that that document, if you needed to see the deed for whatever reason, you can see that we have that image and you can actually purchase and download it there. Dude, that's wild. That's really cool. Okay, I, so I just wanted to chime in here as you're going along because these are some of the things that I do in my business with PropStream. So the other day I searched for new cash buyers, um, downloaded a bunch, sorted them out by the amount of transactions they've done in the past 18 months, and then we're skip tracing them and about to mail them. So, I mean, the cash buyer feed right there is a huge feature if you're looking to add. Let, yeah, let's show the audience that live. Like what, pick a city. We'll do that real quick. Uh, just Anywhere go Baltimore, Maryland. And so uh, Jeff McBride asked, is there a way to search county or state data? I know county there is because it doesn't pop up to pre-populate, yeah. but I always search Baltimore County, Maryland, and it comes up with the countywide. No exactly. Problem. That's the magic trick. The magic trick is always adding the name county right next to the name of the county, right? Um, it, it seems obvious, but it, it kind of isn't. Um, so make sure you spell the, the word county after, and then you're going to be able to get a county search. So now it's going to search the whole county. We can go in there. And like you said, quickly, we can identify cash buyers and go to ownership info and we can hit one year max, right? So this is going to be all the cash transactions that have happened in that year, right? This could be a professional buyer, multiple properties, or it could be second, you know, second homeowners, whatever it may be. You can start filtering this down if you wanted to, but this is very broad. 2,300 right now, today's times. I think it'd be good to, to reach out to folks and see kind of where their mind is, yep. uh, where they're buying overall, right? So we can save this, we have 2,300, click here, we can identify um, what that was, what kind of cash sale that was, ownership info, the names, uh, the groups, like right here, look at this, financial yeah, if, group incorporated, if, right? If, if PropStream did nothing else, just for the cash buyers feature right here, it'd be worth it. Look at the top, it was something like 4,600 or something like that. We downloaded all of those, and then we sorted them in Excel to find out who had the most transactions. We were able to sort by the amount of transactions and worry about that top 10 to 20% of buyers in your market, the ones who have done the most recent deals or the, the deals that look like the one that you have. You can sort by that as well. So super, super valuable feature here. Yeah, and let me, and let me show you this other one. In addition to that, you can select your flippers. These are going to be folks that bought and sold within uh, – within the defined time. By default, it's 24 months, or you can set it down to, to uh, 12 months. So this is gonna identify you know, the quick, transact, uh, quick transactions of, of perhaps an investor, you know, rehabber, whoever that may be, right? So this is another way of sorting that down to reach out to folks to see if they're uh, you know, buying right now or, or where they are right now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so after cash transactions, I know we're pulling in our business, I think we have six or eight regular lists that we're updating now on a monthly basis, just from PropStream. And so for instance, a lot of ours, um, we are like stacking right within PropStream. Can you go and talk about just some common lists that maybe you do in your business or you see other people do? Like for instance, we'll do vacant and out of state owner, or we'll do liens over 2,500 bucks and then out of state owner or something like that, where we're stacking on motivations. Can you show us some right, ones? So, that you do yeah, that? I'll, I'll show you some things. And I'm, I'm cool. You, you mentioned a point there. So prop is cool because you can, obviously everybody talks about stacking now because we've been kind of programmed. What we were doing is we're, we're finding niche lists, right? And then we'd end up saving them. We end up identifying uh, what they are and what, what happens to be on the most, right? That's basically what stacking is. Um, what we can do with prop stream we can kind of do that stacking on the front end, right? Really niche down that list with all the different, you know, issues or 
situations uh, to really shrink down your list so that you're not necessarily stacking on the back end. So there's a couple of different ways to do things. Of course, you could create one list that is, you know, of a certain type, you know, just liens, just pre foreclosures, just this, just that, and then stack them afterward. But I'm, I'm bringing this up because uh, there are multiple ways um, of kind of going about, you know, and that kind of matches your workflow or what fits into your business. And so I've seen a million different ways to do the, the, the same thing through different customers out there. So that's kind of fun. Um, let me, let's do this. So uh, where do you want, what city do you want to go into here? Pick one, Josh. Um, let's just do Baltimore. Baltimore. Okay. We'll stick there. We'll stick with a wide data set of Baltimore County. We go into our filter set and I always suggest having some sort of base criteria, you know, have an understanding of, of what type of property that, that this list is going to be. I don't really recommend mixing the condos and the multifamilies. I, I think for understanding your, your reporting of your marketing and how all that's doing, I, th I think it's probably wise to separate those different types. Um, at least I do. Um, so I would definitely start by uh, identifying single family, not on market. Um, and then we can do individual ownership. And the reason I do this, you can take the corporate and I suggest you do as well, but within, uh, within prop, prop stream, I'm able to save it and skip trace it inside of here, right? Easily. The LLCs, you know, the, the corporations won't be, uh, we won't be able to get your returns on that inside of here. So you definitely want to separate this out. So if you're creating a list of individuals, then go in there and create that, that list for those LLCs as well. Um, you'll just have to pull it out of the system and go through the exercise of finding that, that contact information. So we'll add individual. Um, I might add years of ownership. Um, and then I'll add some meat on the bone, 50% equity, right? That might vary depending on where you guys are, what you exactly are doing, maybe what the buying strategy is, right? But this is kind of what I consider base criteria. Yeah. And this yeah. is going to be very wide, right? And then, and then the question is, what are you doing for marketing? What are you, what are you doing for marketing and what's the capacity uh, of your marketing and how can you process that, right? Those are big questions because, you know, not just getting out the marketing is, is the important part, but what do you do when those calls come in? What do you do with your follow-up? What do you do with all that sort of, sort of stuff? So I always mention that to, to just keep that in mind when, when you're trying to decide how big do I go, right? What, what are the limitations that you have? And then work from there out and how to expand that out. So here with this basic criteria, we have 68,000 properties. Maybe if you're doing a ton of text and calling and you, you can support that, take it all, right? Maybe just contact everybody in the county that, that meets the base criteria. For most probably, or, or definitely for a, a solopreneurs or, or, or you know, uh, investors kind of get, getting going or starting different marketing channels, that's a lot. So start niching this down based on maybe there's a uh, value type, right? Estimate your value, you know, you're not buying over, you tell me, Josh, like maybe over three, 400 grand, what's, what's the, uh, limit there that, that you guys are kind of focusing on? Yeah. So when I search inside PropStream here, I always put the max value at 400,000. I don't want really my ARV of 400,000 is the top of really where I'm uh, aiming for. Perfect. Yeah. So 400, 400 is your cap, right? Because anything over that, that's probably not going to be something that you can sell. It's not really in your wheelhouse of business that you do. Whatever that is for you guys out there, you know, adjust that for that market. As this finishes up here, it's going to uh, show us our results, which it's going to it's going to shrink that down. What do we have? Sixty eight thousand or so. Hopefully, if if my uh, kid's not doing all these TikToks here, the house it'll <laughs> speed up here, and I'll have my uh, results here for you. But anyway, while while that's loading up here for you guys, you're you know you you start identifying how much can you handle. See, now we have fifty one, so we shrunk down a little bit, right? So we we probably still want to get you know keep keep going here a bit. Um, I would define maybe the estimated equity, maybe depending, maybe you want something that's got a little bit more meat, maybe, you know, move, move it up yep. to 60. That'll, that'll shrink up your base. Right. But again, this is all base criteria, still a lot. We can start niching it down. And this is some of the, some of the areas I suggest you start looking at in your, in your markets, right? Leans. Leans is a really hot file. Um, I, I think to this point, we're still kind of unique in offering that to our space here and, and, yep. and real estate investing. Uh, so these are going to be people that have involuntary liens. So it could be like a county, uh, city tax uh, lien. It could be a mechanics lien. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a variation of, of those types of liens. You can click on one of these and it's going to have a lien detail attached, or I'm sorry, a lien uh, details tab attached so that you can click and actually see what's up. Um, I mentioned before you can filter out lien amounts. Let me, you know what, let me improve our speed here by opening this door. 
Yeah, guys, in our business, just to let you know, in, there. in our personal business, when we're searching for liens like this, we're searching liens over $2,500. Stuff like that, that smaller can be really like small, either tax bills or like niche, like HOA type stuff. So we go over 2,500. Right. So, you know, and in comparison to that, in my business, I just, I contact everybody with a lien, right? So it depends on what is it, what makes sense for you, right? And, and, and uh, what's your strategy and what's your outward strategy, right? So liens, this one's got 1600, right? To me, this is a perfect one for you, uh, for you too, maybe, right, Josh? So you'd want to reach out, see what's going on. And in my marketing mind, I just want you in my database, right? I want to reach out to you as often as we are going uh, to, to, to find out what's going on, right? If you owe money to some people, maybe at some point we can do business, right? That's my, my, my mentality on that. Um, but let me show you what Josh was talking about. We can go into, and tell me how we're doing on time here. Uh, we can go into the lean uh, drop down. We can actually specify it. Uh, if we just want the HOA liens, the tax liens, identify which ones we want. Uh, we can also identify a lien recording date, maybe only the ones from such and such period of time or a lien amount, right? We'll take out, uh, let's say the, the ones under a thousand bucks. So we'll, we'll filter that out. Of course, our, our list is going to shrink down and this gets really niche, right? This is 344. It depends on your, your marketing strategies. If you're mailing, right? This is a good little campaign. Uh, but if you're cold, cold, excuse me, cold calling or texting, that's going to go through quick. Yep. Right. So maybe there's a specific type of message that you will be sending this, this, uh, this smaller list, but maybe also this group is in our wider list. And what I mean by that is uh, we can go in here and uh, take them out of liens right now. They're back into the general pool. Um, I'm sorry. Let's take this out. Let's take this out. Okay. So back to 51,000, right? But maybe we'd want to just shrink it down to like square footage. If we know that we're never buying anything over, you know, 1,200 square feet, 400 square feet, start shrinking it down. Those liens, yes, are in the general pool. We're hitting them with one general message perhaps, but then we're hitting them with a maybe more targeted message just for those liens. Yeah. That's, that's one way to look at it, right? Having two pools and, and, and in some cases uh, in that second pool, they're getting hit twice, right? So guys, one thing that I've struggled with a little bit is because there's so much information here, I've had to niche down a bit, right? And how you do it, uh, Paul's just showing you so many techniques here to do it, right? With square footage, value, equity, dates, liens, types of liens, like all kinds of stuff. You'll find even more once you dive in. We don't have time to like go through all of that today. But once you dive in, you're just going to have to dial in the right criteria for you and really start to find what, what Paul's calling the base criteria. Um, so you have to find just in your county or your city or whatever your market, what that good base criteria looks like. So it's kind of an individual type thing. There's right. just so much here though that you can well, get. Well, take a look at what you're doing. Like, what are you buying? You know, what, what have your transactions been the last year yeah. or, you know, two years? You know, if it's all generally the same type of property, uh, you know, maybe that, that's where you should focus. Start there. Really focus on that exact type of, you know, asset, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. That, that's, that's. That's a good point there. You know, also right now, guys, I want to kind of throw this in here. Uh, you know, landlords, we might have some landlords on the line, right? You know, we're, my intent for, for my company over the last couple of weeks has, has been to reach out to landlords. You know, they Beautiful. might not necessarily be having an issue now, but as this, you know, situation with the pandemic rolls out, you know, rents might become an issue, right? So I want you in my database. So in this general pool, in this county, I do the same thing, go to non-owner occupied. Right now, it's going to shrink it down to 4,700. These are non-owner occupied, right? These are going to be landlords, uh, individually owned, right? We can open this back up. We can take the individual out. We're going to have a lot more results here, right? 6,200. I want to touch, touch base with these landlords, right? Maybe they're not ready to sell right now, but as this progresses, maybe that maybe that situation ch changes for them. So I want to be able to 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 touch base. That's a that's a good list. You could also splice it down by vacancy. You know, a, a non-owner occupied vacant property is probably another segment, sub-segment of that list that you could hyper focus on um, because, you know, maybe they're, they're dealing with some, some stuff right now. Yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. So we are winding down. It's at 426. Bob asked before, can we get, um, can we have multiple users on one account? Yeah, we have uh, the ability to add users. If you go to your settings over here, you go to manage team you can add team users and then you can limit their download. So if you don't want them pulling lists and just comping, um, 
and you can uh, limit the spending limits. So they're not, you know, skip tracing and, you know, spending all the marketing dollars in here. So yeah, Bob, you can do that. Hey guys, I know there's a lot of, well, I, there's people all over the spectrum in here as to how experienced you are. If you're, it wasn't that long ago that I was out on my own, just doing things on my own as a solopreneur. And I think it costs 99 bucks a month, right? So add someone on for 20 bucks. Yeah, Look 97 at a month. And then you add 20, you know, if you have a VA or co, you know, your partner or whatever, you can add somebody, you know, to, to have that access. Um, I mean, it's pretty powerful. I mean, I, I, I not, not just saying because no. I'm on team prop stream, but really as an investor as well, it's, it's kind of a, tiny investment into just having a lot of resources at your fingertips anywhere in the country. So if you get a lead and somebody has a summer house in another state, you no longer have to punt that lead to somebody else right. that you know, or some group that you met or some mastermind, you literally can work that lead, work the comps, put out an intelligent offer and you know, who knows, maybe get that one done. Oh, exactly. And that's where I was just going to go. I was going to say, guys, if you're just starting out or if you're advanced prop stream, I'm telling you, I have obviously no stake in PropStream. I'm not even an affiliate link or anything, but I'm telling you that without a doubt, it is worth the cost per month. Like don't even look at the cost because it's worth its weight in gold. Um, as far as uh, virtual wholesaling goes, and now you can even go nationwide just because of tools like PropStream. So I'm in Baltimore, but if I didn't want to do deals in Baltimore, I could go to Idaho, Iowa, wherever. Now, just because of PropStream, right? That is this all-in-one tool with skip tracing included on the back end. Um, Paul, can you talk a little bit, we're running real short on time, but can you talk a little bit about some smaller niche lists? I love personally the interfamily transfers, unknown um, equity. Um, I really like inherited pool. Well, uh, interfamily transfers, and then like out-of-state um, absentee owners. Those are like three that I really, really love. Yeah, I mean, I love that stuff. Again, it's it's just really, you know, niching it down. Maybe you're going to do a hyper-focused message for that type of stuff, but you can identify that here in the ownership drop-down. And, uh, you know, you can identify if it's out-of-state. You know, somebody out-of-state might have a higher urgency to sell than somebody um, out of just the county. Maybe they're just one county over, right? Or local. That means it's uh, not at that property. It's somewhere in town, right? Um, that's one way inner family transfers. Another, you know, maybe somebody is just, you know, uh, uh, transferring it over to their, to their family. They're, they're inheriting it, you know, not inheriting it. Yeah. Or passing it over to their son or their family, whoever, um, one way, that's one way to identify those, right? These are newer filters that we've added in here. And to be honest with you, I think we've added an extra one or two in the last update. And we're always getting, again, like I said in the beginning feedback. So if you guys are using this or use it, make sure you let us know what's working and what's not, because it, it, it really, we, you know, are open ears to, to taking that feedback and applying it into the platform. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen the tremendous growth that you guys have had since I've been a member about a year ago. I mean, it's just been changing rapidly, like month over month. I know you've read out, rolled out some recent features and I know you got some stuff coming up. Can you kind of tell us some stuff that maybe is not on our radar, even if we're users and then stuff you got coming up, like where you're going? Right, right. So we're, we're always improving our My Property section. You know, we got those features in here, an automated list manager. That's a whole, you know, conversation itself. That will automatically update your list for you. So say a pre-foreclosure list, that's always changing. So instead of having to go in there and constantly pull an update, the system actually does that stuff for you automatically. Um, that, that's available now. That actually just rolled out not that long ago. So if you have a bigger list, why not, right? Why not look at having it automate and, and do the, the dirty work of the, of the marketing, if you will, uh, for you. Also, down the line, you know, we, we have a app in development. That's going to be exciting really to, to have the, the strength of, of what PropStream is in your hand. You know, when we finally get out of this at home stay, you know, when people are finally uh, all going back out on appointments, you know, that'll be really powerful to have in your hand and be able to run comps wherever you are. So we're excited on that. Don't have an exact time frame, but that's kind of an early sneak peek of, of where we're going and the direction we're headed. That's awesome, man. I, do, I personally, I really love when companies take that feedback and really shape it into what they're becoming. And it seems like you guys are doing that like very, very aggressively. It seems like you guys have put a lot of development talent behind uh, the new features and stuff. So kudos yeah. on that. Interesting. The back end is amazing, man. I mean, really our team is, it's outstanding what we're able to do in, in, in the short amount of time, really. Um, so really, I mean, it's props for all those guys. You know, I, I know a lot of people get to see me talk out here, but really, I mean, that team, our support team, you know, when people have questions, you know, email them at support at .com, and they're, they're rock stars. So anything you guys need, just reach out to us and we'll help you guys get straight. Okay.
Dude, I really appreciate that. In the comments, guys, after this, I'm going to post um, some like my six or eight lists that we pull on a regular basis. I'm going to post those, just what they are, so you can copy them and see what you got in your market or whatever, anything like that. Paul, do you have a special link that anyone could use if they're not actually a member right now for PropStream? Again, it's not my link, but um, I should sign up for one. Do you have a link that you could post uh, in our yeah, group? Yeah, I'll, I'll get something for the group. I, I don't know off the top of my head, so I don't want to say something out loud. And then, you know, obviously it's looked at, you know, <laughs> when somebody's hanging out later in their house. Um, so let's get something posted in, um, you know, direct you uh, over there. Uh, also, if you guys have any questions on it, you guys can find me on you know, anywhere online, prop, um, you know, Facebook or whatever that is, Paul yeah. Del Pozo, I'm pretty easy to find, guys. Yeah, awesome. Flex and flip, baby. That's it, guys. Paul, thank you so much for your time. Guys, if you're getting value out of these weekly sessions, let me know. Um, it does take uh, quite a bit of time to plan these and to get them rolled out. If, you're, if you've enjoyed these, if you got value from them, please let me know. If you've got anything specific, any gold nuggets that you've actually put into use in your business, I would love to know in the comments as well. And reason being is I'm going to pivot towards doing more of those things, just like Paul's doing in his business. So if you've gotten value, if you've actually put something into practice and it's earned you money, uh, please let me know. I would love that. And then the last little announcement is, uh, besides, I love doing this part of it, but besides this, everything else I'm quite terrible at. And so I'm looking actually for a co-host. So if anyone would love to help me join, join me in and work um, the lives, work the group a little bit more, um, shoot me a DM or whatever on Facebook. I'd love that. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for all of your time today, my friend. You're just putting out amazing, amazing value for us. I lost you there. I don't know if I can hear you. Can yeah, you hear now I hear you, man. Thank you. I, you, you came back to me. I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure what you said, but man, thank you so much for, for having me on. I, uh, man, I wish I had one last nugget to say, but you know, keep your head up guys, lead your teams on forward. And, and uh, I hope we all prosper and move forward strong. Okay. Dude. Awesome. Go get them guys. I hope you guys got some value out of this and see you next week. This elevator is going up. Peace.